Hey everyone, this is Kieran. Today's exercise is looking at a radial nerve slider. So that's our radial nerve. And the sliding exercises are about trying to resolve, you know, issues if you have like pins and needles, tingling, sometimes numbness, not so much, you know, burning, sharp, electrical type pain. Um, and you probably would be feeling it kind of in through this area or maybe in through the back of the tricep area. So if that sounds like something you've got, then you might find this exercise useful. So we won't go into a, a large discussion around sort of the, the neuromechanics of nerve sliders and gliders because we've covered that a lot in some of our other videos. So if you're interested in some of the rationale behind this stuff, we've got a little bit of information in the description, but then also in our median nerve um, and our ulnar nerve uh, videos, you can find a little more information about how and why we do these things. But uh, in, in short, just for the you know, relevance of this video, we're just talking about the nerve's ability to slide against other tissue. So if you consider flossing as an analogy, that dental floss has got to be able to rub and move against the teeth. And in this, we're thinking about the nerve as the, the floss. And then the teeth could be muscle, could be, could be bones, could be connective tissue. And these things should slide against each other. But when we have mechanical interface issues, we do, can develop like a, a neuromechanosensitivity. And that just means that as that nerve slides against these tissues, and that could also be like a, a compressive around a corner, for example. So as I'm going around there, there's still sliding, but there's also compressive forces. Then you can get these neurological symptoms. Um, it's a bit different if you've got like a conduction block, and that's more if there's like a sustained compression on the nerve. That's a, that's a different kind of thing. These sliders can maybe help therapeutically a little bit, but it's not necessarily gonna resolve a compression issue. So this is just talking about a neuromechanosensitivity. With the radial nerve, we're thinking about its course. And so along that course, where could it create more of this, uh, well, where's the sort of not risk, but where's the common areas we maybe see some of this um, mechanosensitivity develop? It comes down the back of the humerus here, so through the spiral groove and then it wraps around the side of the elbow, around that radial head where it kind of splits off and it can become, uh, I've got sort of some two different nerves and one is about giving sort of motor or muscle information to some of these muscles and then also some sensation stuff on top of the arm. And then some branches further up can be some of the sensation areas up here and it's in that image I have on the thumbnail. So if you have symptoms anywhere down through this area, that's what we're looking at. With the radial nerve, it's a bit harder to offload the arm. You'll see in the other videos, we use a, uh, a box to try and take load out of the shoulder. Um, but in this case, what we're trying to do is promote um, basically the nerve sliding. And we want to work with the one-ended slider first. If you're very irritable, irritable just meaning your symptoms come on easily. And then you build up to a two-ended slider, which gives you the most amount of excursion or sliding. So how would the nerve um, be at its longest, as in like stretch, something we're not going for in this, would be that if I put my thumb in here, turn my hand out like this and bring my wrist up, go backwards and to the side. So I'm going backwards, but I'm also going sideways. So it's kind of on the diagonal. And then my head goes the opposite direction. So now it's on most stretch, and that's not necessarily what we're going for. If I want just one end to move, then I could do just that component like this. And then I could just look straight ahead and I can move on that diagonal backwards. Nerves are going to move most at the area that's moving. So at this slider, it's happening mostly at the shoulder, okay? I could manipulate it so that it's mostly at the elbow. So that would mean being back in this position, starting here, and now I'm bending the elbow. And so now I'm promoting movement around the outside of the elbow, and that might be where your symptoms are being generated from and where you might need to desensitize that nerve, okay? If I wanna bring in the two-ended element, I just need to move an area further away from where the other area is moving. Further, far enough away so that it's not having a shared muscle movement, because we're trying to keep that sort of mechanical interface with that muscle, musculoskeletal component uh, stationary. So my head is going to move 
towards, so I'm shortening this end, and then I'm lengthening this end, and then I'm coming back, now I'm lengthening at the neck end, and I'm shortening at the shoulder end. And I could even come back up into here and open the hand out if I really wanted to shorten it. And I can go back into here, all right? So this is promoting sliding mostly up and around this thoracic outlet shoulder area. If I wanted to manipulate just the wrist or uh, the elbow like we were talking about, I could come into here and what I could do is do this. So now I'm shortening here and lengthening down there at the wrist and then I could just do the wrist movement, all right? That's one option or you can do the elbow movement. Keep the wrist locked in or even neutral and then I'm going to shorten the neck, lengthen at the elbow, we're doing a two-ended slider, okay? So one-ended slider to initiate things, and then two-ended sliders as you build up some more tolerance to the sensitivity. And over time, you might increase other variables like speed. You might increase some loads. You could get into a prone shoulder raise. I've got videos on that. Um, I'll link in the, um, I guess in, in here, it'll come up near me somewhere. But it's where you lay on your tummy and lift backwards. It's kind of a similar movement. And now we're kind of loading the mechanical aspects of it, the musculoskeletal system as well, but there's still excursion and, and things going on. So give this a go. Um, if you want to get, like I said, into more of the fundamentals of how this stuff works, then watch the other videos. But this is a, a great exercise if it's relevant for you and it will be therapeutic. It will reduce those symptoms. If it doesn't or makes things worse, then you need to consider getting a, a, a thorough, proper assessment and an accurate diagnosis or try one of the other sliders or try some of our, our neck exercises. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.